Well, welcome back to HM and Big E Review Things. Uh, we just got back from a trip to Los Angeles and San Francisco. We went up the Pacific One Highway mm -hmm. and we had a great time. And we are here to review the three rocks. Three rocks. We saw three rocks on this trip. The person, the prison, and, and the film. film. Oh, you wish you could find I a I was trying yeah, so yeah, hard yeah. to find a P. The, the motion picture. The picture. The picture is not bad. <laughs> Uh, so we're talking about the 1996 film The Rock, uh, featuring Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery yep. and Ed Harris. We are talking about the Alcatraz prison <laughs> off of San Francisco called The Rock. And we are talking about... The best uh, rock of all, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Uh, <laughs> this is my The Rock figurine from New York Comic Con 2019. Alright, so the three rocks... So this is like, it's like the two popes, but now we're, it's even better. <laughs> the three, the three rocks. rocks. <laughs> All right, which rock do you want to start with? Uh, well, I mean, you can start on the beginning of the trip where mm. Elvin somehow found the rock's address. Okay. <laughs> it, it's not as creepy as it sounds. If you just Google, I know this guy loves the rock, the person. And so I just Googled because we were going to do a drive up on the Hollywood Hills. Uh, just to kind of just drive and see the view and look at some nice houses and you know kind of just be you know googly eyed at nice <laughs> houses and nice cars. So anyway, I, I knew he loved the rock, so I looked up, you know, where does the rock live? You just curious. Obviously there's no specific address, but they chose pictures of his mansion that he bought from whoever, Paul Reiser, I think, who's in the boys. Yeah. Um and it shows, you know, the backyard has a baseball diamond and it said that it's at the end of a cul-de-sac in a neighborhood. Um, I, I like when I think neighborhood, like I think it's pretty large, but when I Google this neighborhood, it's actually just basically a small enclosed uh, gated community. Uh, and then so I just looked, there's a few end cul de sacs, there's one cul de sac in the corner, and because it's Google images, this sounds so stalkery when I say <laughs> it out loud. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's the baseball diamond. I was like, oh, that's his house. And then so I knew it was a gated community and we couldn't drive in, but we, we I was like, do you still want to drive? Because it's just a little past our exit and uh, of, of where we were driving. So like, yeah, sure, let's go. I wanted to breathe the rock's air. <laughs> and he was hoping <laughs> the rock would be out for a walk with his with, dog. With his dog. Hey, man. <laughs> uh, but alas, <laughs> we turned into the gated community. Uh, it's a very nice gate house. It's very nice. Uh, and we just quickly turned tail and, and turned around. There was security. There was, you know, a big gate. Obviously, you couldn't really just go in because everybody would go in. We saw some Hollywood tour buses. But not to give up and not to be deterred. <laughs> we're like, oh, his house is kind of close to this other street that as you go down the hills. Like, I'm sure it'll be a little below the hills. Maybe we can see it. So we drove down. We had to go down anyway. So we went down that way. And like some weird, like really narrow one-way streets, because yeah. I guess it was like a park or something. Uh, and then we stopped in an area where it's like, okay, this is the closest that we can be to the Rock's house. Yes, and I felt the Rock's presence. Yes, there. and he opened the window and shouted something at the Rock, uh, like "I love you" or what, <laughs> I don't remember what you said. But uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson, if you're watching, uh, this guy loves you very much. And if you heard someone shouting uh, <laughs> at your house a few days ago, that was him. Well, I mean, <clears throat> the tour of the Rock's house gets a D. <laughs> because we basically only saw maybe the chimney. But the Rock, as a human being and as an no, actor... No, we didn't see the chimney. We <laughs> saw... Oh, so you see that house there on that mountain? It's two houses <laughs> beside it. <laughs> so it gets a D-. minus. But the Rock, as a person and a producer and an actor, A+. Plus. A+. Plus. <laughs> So that's my review of The Rock. Of course, we could we should I, do a whole episode about I, The Rock. His accomplishments as a wrestler, as a influencer, as a business person, and of course, the best as an action movie star. All right, uh, I I am less uh, of a massive super fan of The Rock, and and so I feel really strange about giving a person a grade. So I'm going to not. Let's just leave it at your A or A plus. A plus. A plus. Uh, so thank you for watching Dwayne Johnson. You get an A+. Plus. That is the first rock. <laughs> rock one. Rock two. Let's talk about... I think talk about the prison because... Yeah, at least yeah, the, the prison movie. first. Yeah. Well, obviously, we the first time I went to San Fran, I didn't know. And if you're if you're watching this and you're going to San Fran, if you want to see Alcatraz, you've got to book way, way in advance. Okay? I didn't know that. So the second trip, this trip, we booked it way in advance and we got tickets to, to the rock, Alcatraz. It's an island off... 
the coast of San Francisco. It's in the bay, I guess. Yeah, it's in the bay if you're in, you know, in the Fisherman's Wharf area or whatever that kind of northern eastern area of San Francisco. You can kind of see it from the harbor. It's 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 pretty distinctive. It's just kind of this outland uh, island. It was a prison famously for 30 some odd years from like the 30s to the, the 60s, 60s yeah. something like that. And uh, I had already gone once uh, before, like 10 years ago when I visited San Fran. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, we decided to go to check it out. And what, do you, what, <laughs> what were your overall thoughts <laughs> of the Rock Prison? <laughs> well, it's San Francisco's most famous tourist attraction. It's always on the top things to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you get your tickets, you get on a ferry boat. It takes about... 20 minutes you yeah, get 10, off 10, 10, 10 minutes. minutes you get off and you walk through and there's an audio guide and it's quite interesting it talks about the different inmates it talks about the prison system so the audio guide is designed to basically keep people moving uh because you can never rewind you can't go back once you press play it's it, it specifically tells you you can stop it but you can never rewind so they never want people kind of traffic flowing back they've designed the audio tour essentially everyone gets one they've designed so that you're not you're not meant to just kind of meander around and look around at your own pace you're meant to just follow this tour go through it in their what in their one-way kind of system and then be done and you hand it back and then you leave gift shop gift shop um I don't remember whether that was what it was like last time. I mean, I, it, the, I, I'm assuming it's similar. Yeah, the prison remains unchanged, uh, and especially a second time, it was fairly underwhelming. Yeah, I would say it's not <clears throat> the most, this is weird to say, interesting prison it's I've seen. Not, yeah. It's yeah. It's just famous because it's there, and they don't have to do any upkeep to make it cool. Yeah, like, you know, as it's get kind of deteriorating, I guess it's supposed to give it more charm that it's it gives it more of that prisony feel uh but they don't, they're not they really have no incentive to enhance it to make the experience kind of better no it, it, it makes them a killing because there's so much of people coming paying premium yeah. price and they do it from dusk to dawn yep and they say you're supposed to arrive an hour before your scheduled time yep. because there's this massive queue of, I don't know, several hundred people lining up to get on the boat, and then there's another boat, and it just keeps going. And so there's lots of people that want to go on. But I mean, in terms of the prison itself, I guess it's somewhat interesting where you can see, the, you know, the, you know how, how the prisoners eat and what they do all day. It's standard stuff. There's a solitary confinement area. It's really not much to see. I, I would, you know, say if you're in San Fran, yeah, you probably could see it once. I definitely probably wouldn't see it twice. I would, having seen it twice, I don't think you should even see it once. Oh, man. I think the quality has, I, I'm surprised that they haven't updated it to make it more interesting. And they should, make, like, it's an a escape, they should make it escape. That's, that's what this guy said. That, yeah, yeah, you should chunk out and make it escape. That would make a killing. That would be really uh, cool. Actually escape from Alcatraz. Yeah. yeah that'd be really cool. Uh, but I think as it stands, it's, it's really not an interesting experience. Uh, it costs a lot. A lot. Like, and not an insignificant amount of money. Uh, and then to make the experience even worse. <laughs> okay, so before we get into this next story of what happened, I would grade the experience to Alcatraz, especially a second time, a D. <laughs> it's fairly low. I was just kind of, okay, walking through. Like, I would have had as much fun just kind of walking around the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what would you grade before, before factoring in this next story that we're going to tell? I was going to give it a B minus. B minus. Okay. okay. The D general. is pretty hard. No, it's a D. For this. For this. But, uh, you know, B minus just because, I guess because it's iconic. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> as we depart from the rock, from, from Alcatraz Island, we actually ran to catch this ferry or else we would have had to wait another 30 minutes. So, we kind of ran the last little bit, uh, last, you know, 100, 200 meters. We're like, oh, we got to hustle a little bit to get on because, oh, it's, it's loading. So, we got on. The boat pushes away from the island. And then just starts spinning in the water. I'm like, this is kind of weird. And then other boats. I thought this is an extended tour. Yeah. <laughs> and then another boat kind of passes, and we're like, oh, okay, maybe they're just <laughs> having to let that boat pass. Wait, something's wrong. We're not moving. We're not moving. You know, Ten minutes, fifteen minutes go by. And it's, it's bobbling a little bit. I'm yeah. kind of like, oh boy. This and he gets seasick. Yeah. Anyway, about fifteen minutes after we we've been adrift, uh, the captain of the boat comes on and tells us that, oh, we've lost steering. Yes. <laughs> And he goes, well, it's a good thing we're not steering into the island. <laughs> it's good that the waves are pushing us away, so we're not going to hit anything. Yes. But we're going to try to fix it uh, or get uh, a tugboat out. And we're like, uh, 
No. <laughs> Please no. Anyway, we and then uh, it devolved into not much happening. The ship is bobbing. No real updates. We see the thirty hour, the thirty minute ship. If we hadn't ran for this one, <laughs> come load people and then leave as well. Yes. Uh, and I think the boat after came as well. Yeah, you know, I was a little bit worried because my mind goes into disaster territory where I'm like thinking, oh boy, we're going to be oh, here overnight. You know, how many? Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, so I plug Sorry, in. no tugs are available. No t- yeah, exactly. Uh, we're going to hit up blankets. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to jump overboard and swim <laughs> to the island, and we're going to sleep there for one night, yeah, free of charge. <laughs> uh, so eventually, I think probably about an hour afterwards they're like oh yeah the tug where we're going to call a tug we've kind of given up on how can they fix the steering no, if it's something lost there it's not like oh the steering switches off you know yes. it's something more complicated so they were like oh a tug is going to come in about 20 minutes and so the tug eventually comes uh we were cheering as it arrived and it actually oddly pulled up alongside us and it eventually did pull us back uh to the pier it the whole the whole incident took Probably an hour and 45 minutes, almost two, two hours, hours. Almost two hours uh, for what was supposed to be a 10 minute ferry ride. Uh, made us almost late for dinner. It made us miss a lot of the other touristy walking around the wharf that we were going to do. Uh, so from a D, <laughs> it goes further. Because, because, like, D. Okay, so if something like this happens yes. as a company, as a, as a gesture of customer service, he, he, oh, you know what? We're going to refund your tickets. That, that would be too that's, too much. That's, that's that would be like the most, the best thing they could do. Yeah, fine. That a, a step down from that would be ten percent off of your next visit, which would be never. Which would be never, but ten percent off of your next visit. Maybe then you could sell that to to the people <laughs> in line or something. Okay, uh, and that, but what they actually did, the only thing they did was they handed out bottles of water. They didn't announce it either. They did not announce it. You had to find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because one of the the other people that were just kind of camping on the ground with us of the second deck were like, oh, well, yeah, they're, they're handing out water. And and then so uh, Homing and his wife uh, did get the, uh, bottles of water. They were $5 each, so I saved 10 whole dollars. I yeah, every so talk. again, on the scale of things that they could have done to rectify the situation from a customer service perspective, handing out water was is pretty at the bottom. That's very at the bottom. At least give a bit of food. Something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Here's a bag of chips, and yeah, but I think maybe it happens frequently enough that <laughs> <laughs> they don't bother uh, even explaining it. They're I just hope like not. that's life. I got off the boat and I made sure to st- walk a little bit wo- woozy and stumble and give a really <sighs> exacerbated face for the other customers in line. Uh, so yes, from a D, did I give a D or D minus? I think it was a D minus. <laughs> no, this goes to a complete F. Oh man, this was a that's too hard. A fair like beginning to end a bad experience <laughs> fine but um, so your b minus does it degrade at all or no you're giving them the benefit of the doubt that's how kind of a person i'm a kind are. person Part, partly because of the third part of this review is i was fascinated to see the scenes from the rock the movie yes so that segues nicely into rock number three, three yes. uh which is uh the rock uh directed by michael bay Produced by Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer at the, the the height of their yes fame and fortune. This is very. This movie is peak '90s action cliche, yes. and I love it. Yes, yes, it it I was love it. when Nicolas Cage was literally unstoppable at the cinema. Which is so weird when you look at this movie, especially in isolation. I understand there was a run between this. Con Air and Face Off. There was a run when he was super popular. Yes. But when you look at it, it's like he's a weird looking dude. He's not like really like you know super charming or anything. I, I he don't plays know three different is. guys in those three different movies. Yeah, like, yeah. In Con Air, he's like the long hair, sexy, muscular guy. In this one, he's like a science nerd. And I think Face Off, he's the bad guy, right? Yes, he is he's the bad, the bad guy. Yes, so. He is. Either you call that luck or a lot of range, <laughs> right? A ton of range. But this was at the height of his stardom. Sean Connery, obviously a mega star in his own right. Uh, he was brought back for this movie, and they brought in Ed Harris in one of his best roles in, in my opinion. Fantastic. I, yeah. I, I think the three main stars, it's so funny because if you just took clips of the three main stars acting in this movie, 
you could separate them and pretend they're in three different <laughs> movies, yeah. and you would you would find it believable. There's a comedy guy, there's a serious military guy, yeah. and there's a spy guy. Yeah, it's all three guy. completely separate. Uh, but they don't interact with. I mean, Sean Connery and 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 Nicholas Cage interact a lot, but they don't interact with Ed Harris too much. I thought Ed Harris. Would I just really thought it was kind of cool. Number one to see mm-hmm. uh, the, some of the locations. Yeah, some of the locations. Some of it's fictional. But some of the places that we we walked through and we walked in, yep. uh, we saw in the movie, and yep. that was kind of cool to like be referent looking at your phone and seeing where they shot yep. the movie. That's just kind of neat. It was back in the '90s when you couldn't CGI as much. Mm-hmm. Like today, CGI you'll just CGI the whole Alcatraz if you could. Well, right? and apparently the 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 I guess trivia about this movie is that because it's a national park, uh, it couldn't be shut down for filming. Oh. So they had to film around tourists that were actually there. Not the ones that were jailed weren't tourists; they're were all actors. But apparently, they they had to work around the tour schedules. Like a big tour would leave, and then they would set up and I film their show. I didn't know that so, because the scene when Ed Harris is walking down and, and he, you know with all of the people and he sends him into the prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, how did they get that tour group? To, right. You know, apart from everybody else, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. Um, I I think a lot of iconic. 90s lines one-liners yeah uh, one-liners uh, you know there's that really iconic shot of the of the infiltration team the marines kind of coming out of the water with yes, their guns yes uh, I don't know the, the the flares at the end yeah Sean Connery does a great scene. job here he's just he, a lot of charm in this role um, you know he's a, like an like one of those original older uh, tough guys have you heard of the fan theory about Sean Connery's character no so that the, the, the the fan theory, which has some backing, uh, just kind of people tying conspiracy theories together, is that John Mason is James Bond. Oh, okay, okay. They're saying that actually from the years that it's actually possible that it matches up after 1962, after Dr. No comes out. He, he, he could have been captured by the FBI and put in prison, and then he broke out, and then he stole the microfilm, and then thing retired. Anyway, and that would be why they disavowed him. Nobody acknowledges that he's a real person. He was trained by the British Secret yes, Service, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he kind of plays that same character, right? It could be an older James Bond. Uh, and so there's there's fans who, who, who like it. Hey, it's believable in this one. Yeah, yeah and... and so they're saying even if it's not official, like it's very probable, especially for Michael Bay. When Michael Bay is hiring, like, oh, we're gonna have Sean Connery, you know, do this role. One of Sean Connery's most iconic roles, of course, uh, is James Bond. That you know, maybe that kind of plays into it. But kind yeah, of neat. It's a it's a fun movie. Uh, it's got all the 1990s action comedy. You know, it is it is nonstop. This movie is nonstop. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> yeah, it's just built higher and higher. And higher. Yeah, I mean, it works for it's this good. type of movie. It Sometimes does. it's just too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, Michael yeah. Bay's Transformers, but uh, this one works where the, the editing, where it really keeps on pace, especially that first hour. Yeah, where you're building up the whole story, where they take over the prison. Yeah, and then you know, then it jumps to Stanley Goodspeed. Well, I think even uh, for, I think the fact that it even starts on that very serious four to six minute sequence. Of Ed Harris's character, right, getting dressed, going yeah. to his wife's grave, and like Making that kind of promise, thing. basically. Yeah, basically, and that already sets the tone that this is a <laughs> maybe a slightly more restrained Michael Bay movie. I mean, it's not really restrained. There's tons of explosions and stuff. The only thing that I felt that they went overboard is from the flow of the movie. I thought it was very good. The the whole underground tunnel. Uh, like when they're in the carts and that that whole yeah, shootout, that, felt that like action scene, Jones. yeah, yeah, it reminded me of that. Um, but I felt that that was one action scene, probably too many. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, that was one of the scenes where I'm a little bit like, yeah, I checked bit, out a little bit, a little, a little bit of a cheese factor there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, you know, anyways, because they've already established, you know, that building relationship between uh, Mason and Goodspeed. They've already... That didn't really add too much. I just thought it was a bit... Anyway, otherwise, I really think it's... As a mindless popcorn action movie, this is... It's up there. It's up there. It's really good. It's probably one of the better Nicolas Cage action movies. Out of those three, that's my favorite one. Uh, On top of Con Air, Face I know, I know. I, I think this one and Face Off. I remember enjoying Face Off. I'd have to revisit Face Off. Um, I remember in, enjoying Face Off quite a lot. I just but don't believe in it. That's you way, don't believe way, in the technology. The, well, yeah. I mean, and the fact that it's you and I switch faces. Yeah. Do, do people really think that? Oh, they're the same person. No, you know, it's just baloney. But this one, I liked it. Uh, Connor's not bad as well. There's some good. There's some really good like cinematography in Face Off. 
with the mirror. Of course, John Woo. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, exactly. And and yeah. Yeah, I mean that's filmed differently. Con Air, in my mind, is the weakest of the three. <sighs> Feel good but story. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. reunites with his daughter. At the yeah, end. yeah, it's yeah, got yeah. that redemption story. Trish, yeah. Trish uh, Underwood, I think her name is. Okay, she does a song. It's it's like. Mega Hollywood feel in the, yeah. in the summer blockbuster territory. Yeah. Was this music Hans Zimmer from The Rock? Ooh, I don't know, but it it's, feels it's like, pretty good. It feels like Hans Zimmer. It does feel like Hans Zimmer, Zimmer, especially yeah. the opening score. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a great movie. Yeah. It is a great movie. What's your final grade for this Third Rock, the movie, 1996 movie? I'd give it an A. Solid A. Nice. I mean, it's probably not an A plus because what gets an A plus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top Gun Maverick. But, you know, it's an A. Yeah, yeah and I think this is... this reinforces my point from a few videos ago about how these gradings is not you can't compare them with other movies because you expect a certain type of movie uh i i agree this is an a movie e easily an a movie it's so so rewatchable, it's uh, rewatchable. I, was, I was just rewatching it yesterday or just for this and i and and my wife was there i was like oh you want to watch this, this is really good <laughs> yeah, yeah it's uh, a and, great movie yeah it's 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 not like one of those movies you know, oh, you've started your ten minutes in. Oh no, you you you'd have to start from the beginning. You can't join this movie. You know, this is you can jump in any time. Two sentences, you're right yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and, movie, and you're yeah. completely sucked in. So those are our, our reviews on the three rocks: yes. the person, the place, the picture. and the picture. Oh yeah, <laughs> I like that. Uh, uh, let us know if you have seen any of these three rocks and what you think and what you think about what we think. Uh, which of the three rocks is your favorite? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to chat with you. Uh, thanks for watching, and until next episode, uh, keep watching things, going to places, and not stalking people. <laughs> <laughs> but if we are, J Dwayne Johnson, if anybody knows Dwayne Johnson, please share this video <laughs> yes. with him. Please, uh, yeah, please hook so, us up. <laughs> yeah, hook us we'd up. We'd love man. to meet him. Uh, love to meet him. <laughs> Give him a high five. All right. Uh, yeah. You're supposed to say like and subscribe. Like, like and subscribe, please. <laughs> we appreciate every one of you. All right. Thank you.